Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Connect Point Church Online. Listen, we're about to get into a time of praise and worship. So from wherever you are, please feel free to jump right in, join in, sing with us. Sing as loud as you want, but let's all join together as one voice and let's worship God this morning. Amen.
Here we are, Lord. Take all of us today, God. We present ourselves as a living sacrifice here today, God. We stand with hearts and minds and souls unabandoned, Lord, for you. You stood before creation. Eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion. My soul now to stand. And you stood before failures you carry the cross for my shame oh my sin weight upon your shoulders my soul now to stand so what could I say What could I do? What else could I do, Lord? But offer this heart, oh God. Completely to you. So I walk upon salvation. Yes, it's your spirit alive in me. This life to declare your promise, my soul now to stand. Who else or what could I say? Yeah. And what could I do? to you oh so what could I say could I say Lord and what could I do yeah but offer this heart oh God completely completely to you The one who gave it all, and thou stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrender all. I am is yours. Come on, I'll stand. Yes, thou stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one. Surrender all I am is yours. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. And thou stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrender all. Yours, all I am, and all I am is yours. We are yours, and all I am is yours. We are yours, God. Yes, Father, we stand before you. 
arms high, Lord, and surrender, Lord. Surrender to your will, God. Surrender to your ways, Lord. Surrendering to your purpose for our lives, Jesus. Father, may we live out the purpose that you've placed upon our lives, God. Father, may we seek your presence day in and day out, Jesus, so that you can come and lead us, Lord, so that you can put on our hearts, God, where we need to be and what we need to do, Jesus. Our lives are not our own, God, but it belongs to you, Father. So we live for you today, Jesus.
you we can't make it Lord we know Lord that without your grace and mercy Lord we can't make it Jesus so Father may we live our lives day after day choosing to serve you God choosing to hear your voice choosing to seek your voice God Father may every day that comes our way Lord we wake up first acknowledging you as our Lord and Savior Lord so you can lead us God so you can show us who is lost out there. So you can show us who we need to be a light in the darkness too, Father. God, may we not hide this light that you've placed in our lives, God. But may we be so bold to speak your name, God. May we be so bold to speak your name unashamed, Lord. Spreading your message, spreading your gospel, Jesus. Because, Lord, today of all days, this time of all times, Lord, People need to know what your message is, Jesus. People need to know what you've done for them on the cross, God. That, Father, hope and salvation lies beyond what they think it is, God. And it lies within you, Jesus. So, Father, may we be used for your glory, God. May we be used to build your kingdom, Jesus. Father, we dedicate ourselves to you, God as a living vessel, Lord, as a living sacrifice before you, Jesus, so we could win the lost for your name's sake, Jesus. Give us your courage. Give us your strength. Give us your boldness, Lord. May we forever proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, not just upon ourselves, but upon those that are lost and seeking God. Thank you for allowing us to be used for you, Lord. So, Father, we say one more time as a body, as believers, Lord, as your children, we love you, Jesus. We glorify your name. We give you the highest praise today, Lord God. For you and you alone are worthy, Jesus. So, Father, we pray all this in your name, God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. We're so glad that you could join us today. We pray that you would have a blessed week and we look forward to seeing you again. Go ahead and check out these announcements. Thank you for tuning in with us today. We're so glad you could join us. We want you to know that we're here for you and that there's no distance through prayer. If you have a prayer request today, please text PRAYER to 808-400-6590 or let us know through our app. We'll be having our Connect Kids online program on Sundays at 5 p.m. Join us on Mondays at 7 p.m. for a time of prayer and communion. If you're between the ages of 12 and 18, join in with Bold Youth on Friday nights at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Young adults gather together on Saturdays from 7.15 p.m. to 8.15 p.m. on Zoom. If you are interested in furthering your education and want to learn more about Impact Leadership Institute, you can email us at impact at connectpointchurch.com. We have a free gift for you. To get plugged into Right Now Media, text right now, connect point, to 41411. And also, don't forget to sign up for one of our Zoom groups, available through our app, or by texting groups to 808-400-6590. If you'd like to give, here are a few ways to do so. One, you can download our church app. Two, our website at connectpointchurch.com. Three, text GIVE to 808 400 6590 
Or you can mail in your giving to 168 Polamua Street or drop it off at the church. If you'd like to stay connected with us, please download our church app, follow us on Facebook or Instagram for our weekly updates. Hello everyone, we have an exciting announcement to make. Uh, as you guys know, we've been uh, seeking out a pastor to join our team and it's been my heart to say that we never want people falling through the cracks to better serve uh, the people here at Connect Point Church. And uh, through prayer over this last year, uh, God has uh, sent Pastor Darren Fisher. Uh, he formerly was COO of Global Passion, who they would put um, students on airplanes, send them around the world on mission trips and allow God to call them uh, to be missionaries. And uh, we're pleased and uh, happy that uh, he'll be making a transition here full time um, to Hawaii. And uh, we're happy that he's gonna be our outreach pastor. As you guys know, we're very heavily involved in our community and Pastor Darren will be overseeing our community outreach so we can more effectively serve the people here in Hawaii. We'll also be overseeing a lot of our leadership development helping with our systems and our process to be more effective. Uh, so I want you to give a warm welcome. If you see him, welcome him on board to our team uh, as our new outreach pastor. And he also will be bringing the word this morning. So please lean in this morning as he continues a message on our study in the book of Ephesians. So what can I say and what could I do? but offer this heart, O oh God, completely to you. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. So I'll stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrendered. All I am is yours. I therefore, as a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Amen. Church, I am so glad to be here with you this morning on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, my name is Darren Fisher, and I have for a while been one of your missionaries here at Connect Point Church, but I'm so glad to be a part of this team now at Connect Point as your outreach pastor and the Lord has been speaking to me so tremendously through Ephesians over these last several weeks, and I believe that he's been speaking to you as well. And I'm so excited to share with you today what I believe that God has placed on my heart. But I wanted to start with those words from the worship song that we just sang together, The Stand. I think they're so powerful, this thought that all I am is yours. Because today I want to challenge you with the thought of kingdom living and what your life really looks like in service to your king. And so would you get together, get with me, open up your Bibles. If you don't have them, take a minute, go grab them. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4 today, verses 1 to 16. And I want you to go on this journey with me, because I believe that God has something that he wants to speak to you. But before we get into the message today, could we just pause and pray? Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, we thank you so much for this glorious day that you have given us. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that is a part of Connect Point Church and all those who are tuning in with us online today. God, I pray that as we draw close to you and pause for this moment from the busyness of our lives to hear your voice, I ask, oh God, that we would hear you clearly. Lord, I pray today that you would speak through me to your people. God, I ask that today, right now, this very moment, that we would encounter you in a radical and real way. So, Lord, we give you this time together. Father, would you meet us here? Holy Spirit, would your will be done, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. You know, before I get into the message, I just want to share a little bit about what today is for the church. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It is a tremendous day for the church, and maybe you weren't aware of that, and I just wanted to share a few things about Pentecost with you today. Pentecost is a feast that's held 50 days after Passover. It's called the Day of the First Fruits. In fact, on the Old Testament day of Pentecost, Israel received the law, 
And on the New Testament day of Pentecost, the church received the spirit of grace in its fullness, the Holy Spirit. In fact, in Acts chapter 2, you can read of this great story of the Holy Spirit coming upon the disciples. It's a profound moment in our history as the church. I'd encourage you to go and check it out. But in this moment, I want to remind us that the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is for others through you. It's God's gift to those who believe to accomplish his great purpose in this world. And I want to just highlight for a moment what life looked like after that moment on the day of Pentecost for the early church. And it's captured here in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. I just wanted to read it with you this morning. It says this, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. On this Pentecost Sunday, I encourage you to let this be a first fruits moment. Let this be a day that you bring your best to the Lord. I pray that this Pentecost Sunday, you would be encouraged in the fullness of his spirit. I love what it says of the early church, that there was no need among them. Wow, can you imagine that for a moment? That it was natural in their culture of the early church that if there was ever need, that they would sell their own possessions to care for those who had that need. What a powerful reality of the greatness of our God to live in such a sacrificial way. And so today, like I mentioned, we're continuing in our study on the letter of, to the church in Ephesus, Ephesians. And for the last several weeks, Pastor dion has been leading us through the first three chapters of Paul's letter. Paul spends the first portion of his letter to the church in Ephesus, chapters 1 through 3, expressing in beautiful detail all that God has done for us freely by his grace. It's the gospel story, really. And here we begin the second portion of Paul's writing, to the church in Ephesus, chapters 4 through 6. Chapter 3 ends with this beautiful prayer for all of those hearing these words, encouraging a deep in pursuit of transformation. And here in chapter 4, we begin to look at what this transformed life really looks like for those who believe. The remainder of Paul's letter is a call to live rightly. I would call this portion our story. So we've heard of God's story the last three chapters. Now we're going to talk about our story, how we fit in to the work of God here in this world. And in this letter to the Ephesians, Paul summarizes this beautiful gospel story and how it should reshape every part of our life story. Let me say that again. The gospel story is meant to reshape every part of our life story. In fact, other places in Scripture, it talks about this pursuit of Christ being a transformation wholly and completely of who we are. And so would you lean into this thought today that God desires to transform you more into the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. Today, I have the privilege of sharing with you what the Lord has placed on my heart from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. And as we begin, I'd like to read through the entirety of this passage, all 16 verses. And you might be thinking, well, that's a lot to read, Pastor Darren. I know, but I love it because Scripture, when it was originally written, was actually meant to be read aloud so that people could hear it. And so today, as you hear these words, would you just join me in maybe closing your eyes and hearing these words being spoken? And would you take a moment to pray this prayer? Lord, What do you want to speak to me today? Let's open our Bibles to Ephesians. It says this. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. 
with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hear this, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up. In love. Amen. Now, I don't know what stood out to you from that passage. I would venture to say that if you're sitting in a room with several people, that maybe something different stood out to each person sitting in that room. In fact, I think that's the beauty of Scripture. We call it the living Word of God because His Spirit is showing us and teaching us from these words every moment, every day. I love that I can go back to a passage and the Lord can speak something completely new and fresh to me that I never heard or seen before. And the Lord was doing that for me through this passage. There's so many things I could focus on. And before I get into what I believe the Lord has given me to share with you today, I just want to share this thought with you, is that this journey of studying Scripture is like digging for gold or digging for diamonds, It's a process that takes time and effort. And friends, I want to tell you that in the pages of this beautiful book called the Bible are so many gems, gold and diamonds and rubies that are yours to discover. And I would encourage you to dig deep into these words as we're studying through the book of Ephesians. And so here's some thoughts that the Lord has planted in my heart from this chapter, these verses. The church is a big family with lots of different people, but we are all one. Isn't that so beautiful that we can celebrate the uniqueness of each individual, yet we are unified together as one body, unified by his spirit. Let me say that again, unified by his spirit. Unity does not equal uniformity. I've often thought that before in my life, that to be in unity means everybody's got to look the same. I was a youth pastor for many years, and it just seemed like a trend for all kinds of things, that youth groups would get matching shirts, you know, every event, every mission trip. You got to have all the same shirts for stuff. And it's cool. It's a visible sign of unity, but unity doesn't equal uniformity. Unity is us coming together through his spirit to accomplish his great work as one. We are all empowered by the Holy Spirit to use our unique talents and passions to serve and love each other, to build up the church. And friends, can I tell you, the church is the people. It's not the building. It's not the organization. It's not the institution. The church is you and I. I've had such a great time gathering together with people on Sundays. 
and experiencing our services. It's been so beautiful in our home as we've worshiped together, prayed together, fellowship together. It really feels like the early church. And I hope that you are utilizing these same moments to lean in to what it can look like to really be the church. So first, I want to talk to you about the what of this passage. You maybe remember from school when you were trying to study on things, they'd always say, you got to ask these questions, and maybe you already know what they are, the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why, and they would always add the H, how. And so today I want to share some of those thoughts with you today. So I want to start with the what that Paul is writing about here. Walking in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. It says this in verse 1. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. I think it's really important whenever you read scripture that if you see the word therefore, you pause for a moment and you ask the question, what is it there for? It's so simple, but it's so profound. And this begins with the word therefore. And what Paul is really getting here at is that because of everything that I have just said, and as I started this, I, I shared that the first three chapters have really been the gospel story, God's story. And Paul has said, because of all of these things that our God has done, therefore, I want to talk to you about kingdom living. I want to talk to you about living a life worthy of the calling that you have received. And Paul begins here with these words, a prisoner for the Lord. You've heard from Pastor Dion, and as you study, you've seen this, that yes, Paul's in prison by the Romans at this point of his life, but I really believe that there's something deeper to these words. I believe that Paul is not just in prison physically, but that he is living a life that Paul might say something like this. I am so captivated by the reality of my king that there is nowhere I can flee. I am his prisoner. I think Paul was so sold out for the one who he served, the one who sent him, that there is nowhere Paul could go to escape him. He was his prisoner, whether it was in chains or free, Paul was a prisoner for the Lord. I wonder today if you were so captivated in the same way. And the what I'd like to share this is that when you understand who you are and whose you are, it changes everything. When you understand who you are and whose you are, it changes everything. I am a Christian. As I was studying for this week, I came across this passage that noted that Martin Luther would counsel people to respond to every temptation of Satan with the phrase, Christianus sum, I am a Christian. Wow, such a simple thought, but so profound, isn't it? the recognition and remembrance of who I am. I am a Christian. I wonder what would happen if every moment that I was about to choose a sinful thing, if I responded with the words, I am a Christian, to remind myself that that is no longer the way that I live. Those are no longer the things that I choose because I have surrendered my life to the Lord. All I am is yours. Kingdom living truly begins with understanding who we are and who he is. Verses 2 to 3 go on to say this. I think that there are how for this passage. It says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, maybe you're like me, and you just heard that first verse that says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. I wonder if you ask the question, how do I do that, Pastor Darren? What does that look like? I think verses 2 and 3 are sharing that with us. First, it talks about humility and gentleness. A worthy walk before God will be marked by humility and gentleness not an entitled desire to defend our own rights and advance our own agenda. I've often heard it said that humility is best defined as an accurate view of oneself. We often talk about humility being a humble position, a lowly position, but I'd like to encourage you today that true hum humility is an accurate understanding of who you are. And I believe that when we understand that truly in the nature of the kingdom, we recognize that he is the king and I am his servant. 
I am here to accomplish the will of my Father in heaven in the same way that Christ Jesus was. And I believe humility is best defined this way. Humility can sometimes be considered lowliness. It means that we can be happy and content when we are not in control or steering things our way. Let me put it to you this way. Is the Lord the one driving your car? And you in the passenger seat? Or are you in this, the driver's seat inviting him to come on your journey with you? Or have you accepted his invitation to come on his journey that he's trying to lead you on? True humility really requires gentleness, I believe. And I think that's why Paul writes about them together here. He goes on to say this, the second part, with patience bearing with one another in love. We need this so that the inevitable wrongs that occur between people in our family, the church, will not work against God's purpose of bringing all things together in Jesus. With patience, bearing with one another in love. Sometimes we can be very impatient to see the things of the Lord come to pass. Friends, can I encourage you today with these words from Paul? that it's through patience, bearing with one another in love, that we will see the fullness of our king. The last thing Paul writes about here in this, these second couple verses, verse 2 and 3, maintaining unity. We must endeavor to keep this spiritual unity. We don't create it. Please hear this. God creates spiritual unity through his spirit. It is our duty to recognize it and to keep it. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Unity does not equal uniformity. We must learn to celebrate the uniqueness of all the parts of the body. We are one, but we are not the same. Charles Spurgeon said this, We want unity in the truth of God through the Spirit of God. This lets us seek after. Let us live near to Christ. For this is the best way of promoting unity. Divisions in churches never begin with those full of love to the Savior. Man, if you are in love with him, it will always bring you closer to his people. Unity. As I begin to wrap some of these thoughts up, I want to quickly share about the character of a worthy walk. And I'd encourage you to go and read this passage. It's in Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 26. I'm not going to read it all to you today. I'd encourage you to go see it. But a part of it you'll be very familiar with, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, Paul wrote this letter to the church in Galatia as well. He's writing here to the Ephesians that we're reading through and we're studying through, but he also wrote to the Galatians, I think talking about a really similar thing, that what does it look like? What is the how? How can I actually live a life worthy of the calling to which I have been called? I think it's by choosing these kinds of actions in our lives. And you know them. You could probably repeat them with me today. Here they go. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Wow, that is beautiful. It says in verse 25 of that passage, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. I think Paul highlights these nine fruits of the Spirit, and I would suggest today that these are not just fruits of something we can attain. These are choices that we can make. I believe that Paul is highlighting these nine distinct choices that every believer can choose when faced with difficult circumstances. Kingdom living is a choice, and it is determined and led by choices, not feelings. In a few moments, I'm going to give us all an opportunity to respond to the Holy Spirit. I'm confident that all of us have some areas that we've not made the God-honoring choice. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I am a Christian. If you jump down in this passage to verses 14 to 16, I think Paul gives us the why. He says this, So that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, 
by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Friends, I hope you can hear the depth of what Paul is writing about here, is that we are called to become more and more like Jesus Christ every single day. I am a Christian. I am living my life choosing to emulate Jesus Christ, choosing to represent him in everything I say, everything I do. And friends, can I tell you that when you make this choice, everything will come together. His will will be done in your life. His will will be done in this world when we commit to the life that Jesus is calling to. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I am a Christian. Therefore, as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Right now, we're going to take a moment to respond to his presence. Wherever you are, would you just join me in this next moment? We're going to have a song of response. And would you join me as this song plays to search your heart, to search your mind, to consider if there is anything within you that you need to lay down at his feet today. Are you truly living a life that is honoring to God? Are you truly living a life that is showing others him? Are you choosing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control? Is that the character of your life today? Or are there some things you need to lay at his feet? So would you take a moment with me And consider what the Lord may be asking of you through his message today. Let's take a moment as this worship song plays. Let's respond to his spirit. Give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Oh, give myself away so you can.
Thank you for meeting us where we are today. Lord, thank you for speaking to our hearts. God, I thank you that when we forsake you, that you never give up on us. Lord, I pray for my family today. Lord, those that have been responding to you in this moment. Lord, I ask that you would continue your great work within them. In Jesus' name, amen. We sang these words just a moment ago. I give myself away so you can use me. Oh, Hannah, I want to ask today, is that truly the cry of your heart? Have you fully given yourself away to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Have you fully allowed him to lead you and guide you in every step and in every moment? I began this journey today with us of sharing about the day of Pentecost, this moment when the Holy Spirit came upon God's people and empowered them for his purposes, for his work. But I reminded us that the empowerment of his spirit is through us for others. And so today we sang these words, I give myself away. I pray that that would be your prayer going through this week. In every moment, in every situation, Lord, I give myself away so that you can use me. It's a profound thought, isn't it? That the Lord cannot use something that has not been given to him to use. Go there with me for a second. Do you hear it? The Lord is desiring for us to surrender ourselves to him so that he can fully use us the best way that he can. Well, isn't that a profound thought? That the Lord is best capable of using us when we actually lay ourselves down at his feet. And so, friends, as we close this service today, would that song ring within your spirit? Would you pray this prayer with me this week, Lord? Use me. Father, use me, I pray. And in your prayer, would you surrender? Would you surrender the things that have held you back? Would you surrender the things that have stopped you from fully living your life for Jesus Christ 100% sold out for his purposes, for his kingdom? I pray that today would be a moment where you could stand strong with arms high and heart abandoned that this would be a day where you could stand in that moment and you could declare the truth, I am a Christian. I am a Christian. 
and there may be some of you listening today that you've heard these words and you felt this tugging within you, the Holy Spirit tugging upon your heart. I want to give you the opportunity right now to surrender your life to him. Maybe it's for the first time. Maybe you've never fully surrendered your heart to the Lord, and this is your first step into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe some of you that are with us today, that this is a recommitment moment, that you know that you have not been living your life for him. You know that you have strayed away. You know that you are choosing the sinful things over the godly things, and maybe you need to come back to him today. I want to give you that opportunity to make your heart right with him on this Pentecost Sunday so that his spirit can fill you and empower you for his work, for his kingdom. And so if that's you today, in fact, would everybody with us today, would you join me in repeating this prayer as we celebrate our Savior and surrender our hearts to him? Let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice on the cross for me. Lord, today I recognize that you are the king of my life, that you paid the ultimate price so that I could be forgiven. And Lord, today I recognize that you purchased me. And Lord, because of your great sacrifice, I come to you today, humble and gentle, and I ask, O oh Lord, that you would forgive me of every sin that I have ever committed. Lord, would you welcome me into your family, I pray. Holy Spirit, fill me up today for your purposes and for your work. Lord, today I declare that you are the king of my life and that I will live for you forever. Thank you for adopting me into your family. Amen. Amen. Wow, friends, I am so excited for any of you that prayed this prayer for the first time today. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome into his kingdom. And as you join us, I pray that you would begin to open up a Bible. And friends, if you're tuning in today and you do not have your own Bible, or you're looking for some resources to help you grow, would you please reach out to us? You're going to see a number on the screen, and you can text the word SAVE to 808-400-6590, and we would love to reach out to you and resource you and get you connected to the family of God. As we close today, I want to remind you of this, that you are chosen that the Lord desires to use you. And I want to close with the same words I began this time with. So what can I say and what could I do but offer this heart, O oh God, completely to you? So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. So I'll stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. I therefore, as a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Amen. Thank you for tuning in with us. We hope you enjoyed the service. Be sure to stay connected with us throughout the week. We are now offering Zoom groups and you can now sign up for an available group through our app or by texting groups to 808-400-6590. Don't miss out on community and find your group today. Once again, we thank you for your support and for tuning in with us. We are excited and can hardly wait for the church doors to reopen once again. But as in everything, there is still some prep work that's needing to take place so we can serve you with safe care. We ask that you bear with us and continue joining us online until further notice. We love you, be safe, and we'll see you next week.